hello once again and welcome to Club Prairie Fire, the home of tequila, Tabasco and the Duckworth Lewis Stern system. Apologies to Stern, who I've been avoiding for the last 10 <laughs> weeks. I am the Professor, coming to you today live from Ollie's Dirty Bachelor Pad in Sydney. And it is, it's filthy. 37 matches down, 11 to go. We are officially at the business end of proceedings of this Cricket World Cup. The cricket monster that is India rolls on. As Mark Nicholas described it, a shellacking of South Africa as them still undefeated and bolted to the top of the table. The Proteas, despite getting their pants well and truly pulled down, remain in second place. Following their immoral victory over England, the Aussies have slipped into third place, (laughs) overtaking their Antipodean brothers who got well and truly Duckworth Lewis sterned in their last match (coughs) against Pakistan, who now sit in fifth. Afghanistan are also on four wins, sitting sixth with a match in hand. Sri Lanka sitting seventh. And the mighty Dutch are still sitting in eighth. In second last, it's Bangladesh, who, as we all know, have had a tournament to forget. And finally, in last place, a team who is so bad, I have decided I now can't laugh at them anymore, but genuinely feel sorry for them. It is (laughs) England. Um, Let's bring them in real quick. Michael Vaughan in Mumbai and Adam Gilchrist in Perth. Is that right? Yes. Yes, that's right from my end. What about you, Vaughn? Are you ha- where are you travelling around at the moment? Yeah, in Mumbai, guys. Uh, just had a, a game of paddle tennis on a roof, um, like you do mm-hmm. in Mumbai. Um, nice sweat on, just to uh, just sweat away a few cob- uh, cobwebs. Oli, uh, just before we start, can I, there was a tweet the other day. I just want you to clarify this because it, uh, the tweet went out. It said, Justin... You know, we are talking a bit about England later on, but it says uh, the England versus Australia World Cup cricket match will be replayed after Johnny Bairstow complained that he got out first ball. Now, is that right? Yeah, it has gone to judiciary. Um, in, uh, <laughs> but the good news is you are actually on the panel, so it looks like we might have a good chance of getting <laughs> it over the line. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and also, on it, just, just while we're on England, can you just um, do the maths quickly? England are the mm. only team in this World Cup to fry it in India. That's correct. So when they bowled India out for 229, that's mm. the only time in the World Cup that India went, shit, we might yeah. actually lose the game. Is that correct? That's correct. And the only team to get Virat Kohli out for less than about 400. Mm. So, yeah, right. a good bowling side. No, they get, they're, they're... get any points for that, Ollie, or not? No points because the man who is joining us is likely also to get out Virat for another duck. In the yes. biggest game of the tournament, he is. Let me let me bring him in here um, very quickly. Another special guest on this podcast. It just rolls on. It's growing. It's booming. He's a man who's been setting the tournament alight and has quickly become our favourite player here on this podcast. He's so good. He's played for two cricketing power. Mm. <laughs> if he's not turning it a mile with his left arm spin, he's smashing the ball out of the park, ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome Roloff Van der Merwe. Yeah, welcome, welcome. Thanks for having me, guys. Orange welcome. Army. Orange Army. <laughs> now, Rolf, you must be pretty pumped with how this World Cup has gone for the Dutch so far. Yeah, I think I think we've played played some good cricket, but yeah, um, also not obviously the cricket we really wanted to. But you know, beating South Africa, Bangladesh, and uh, you know a few good showings. But uh, yeah, no, we still got uh, two more two more big games to go, and uh, yeah, a few more wins maybe. Ralph, Ralph, uh, you got the minnows. You tuck one away against England, so I'll give you two more points. Uh, thanks for joining us too. But um, really good to, to catch up and chat. Who, who's your other, remind me? Who's your other game against? You got two more, haven't you? Yeah. So we got England. England. Sorry, and sorry, guys. Phones ringing. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> what are you on about? Right, this is a podcast. Ice buckets. Yeah, I'd like some ice at eleven forty-five. That's okay. <laughs> Oh my god! Thank you very much. Eleven forty-five. Thank you very much. Good have sir. A... Right, I... sorry uh... about that, guys. Okay, yeah, we got... We'll edit that. We'll edit that bit out. <laughs> and then we got uh, Bangalore. We yeah, last game on Diwali, so that'll be a be a, a great great event. Yeah, so it's still mathematically alive, well and truly. You know, you'll get the net run rate up against England and just clean up in the last one. Yeah, so. Obviously, planning is everything, you know. So we're looking for about a two hundred run difference against England. Uh, <laughs> the net run, yeah, that's given. 
and, and then play a tight game against India, and that that should be enough then. Uh, but yeah, we still yeah we still need other other results to go away. But yeah, uh, we got uh, yeah we need the four points. Yeah, <laughs> I reckon you'll get them. I well, I, I'm interested. So you beat South, South Africa. Have played some good cricket, apart from obviously getting blown away by by um, you know I guess the favourites India. When you beat a South African side like you did, you hammered them. Uh, how did you guys celebrate? Well, as you do, a few beers and uh, you know. But uh, no, it was a, that was a massive game. That was an unbelievable win for us. You know, the Durham Shala was a top venue, and you know the way they've played, it was. Yeah, it was just, was an underdog call, and uh, we we, kicked, we got off the line through them. That I, I like that question, Vaughan, because that's just prompted me, reminded me that. Um, I, and and Rolfi, I'm, I'm going with Bulldog, if that's right. Your nickname in the team's Bulldog, isn't it? Am I correct there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I did read with interest that in an interview where you were asked if you actually had thought of getting a bulldog as a pet, and you. I think said no. They're a bit high maintenance. But you, what if you've got a cross between a, a what a Shih Tzu and a poodle? Yeah. So is that a poo shit or a shit poo? <laughs> <laughs> it's a shit poo. <laughs> it's a shit poo. Right, right. Okay. Well, most of them are, aren't they? But um, I like the fact that the, I don't know if you followed the podcast much at all, but it's an unashamed attempt at to get linked in with a tequila company, be it sponsored or get our own brand going, which we may. Actually, your bulldog might be on the front because it's currently called El Shito, the, the the brand that we're going with. But you look to me, whether you like tequila or not, you definitely, and we have discussed this on the podcast, that you look like a bloke we'd love to have in our team and to enjoy a beer with after a game. So I'm going to actually just crack a quick one here to say that I have had a beer. Well, I'm not sure whether you're going to be drinking one at the moment. You've probably got train in the Savo, but anyway... <laughs> Great to have you on here, mate. So thanks, Vaughny, for reminding me of us, our desire to have a beer with uh, oh, the Bulldog. Right, right, Rolls, I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued by that dog, shit poo, because I've had plenty of shit poos <laughs> over here in India. <laughs> <laughs> now, yeah. the other team you defeated was Bangladesh. You, you put them to the sword. Um, there was a bit of chat on our WhatsApp because you weren't in the side. Mm. Is it true that you were rested because they knew they had these big matches coming up against England and India. That's what. That's we. That's how we read it. Is that right? I actually had one of those shit poos. So. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, oh. I was tired enough. I couldn't couldn't move. So uh, yeah, the rest was needed. What wow. we? What, what you just flat out? It was a what a dodgy prawn or something or a, a, a dodgy doll. Still trying to figure it out, but uh, I didn't take take to my body too well. So uh, you know, and then obviously at at my age, it's uh, when it hits, it hits a bit harder these days. So uh, yeah. <laughs> now, now, Rolls, I'm interested. You know, team planning is always the key for high performance and high success. So you're probably trained today. You'll train tomorrow. Go to the game on Wednesday in Pune. So in the team room, do you still discuss how to get certain players out? And, I, and I'm intrigued to know, will you, will you as a team be realising the tactic against Johnny Bairstow that he's got a weakness leaving his crease while the ball's still alive? And will, 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 you, will, will, you, will you as a team target that? That's, that's definitely in our notes. Um, you know, you've got to use everything to your advantage. So uh, it'll be, be spoken about. But, uh, yeah, no, it's... Uh, yeah, we need to do all the prep. You know, we don't play against these boys very much. We don't know much about these uh, these boys. So, uh, you know, mm. better info from me. And, uh, yeah, it will be uh, be pro- quite a process. Yeah. Speaking of uh, England, they have a few, few struggles, uh, obviously, led by Joss Butler, uh, someone you know pretty well from down in Somerset ways. Any, are you going to give him some words of advice as someone who's a few places above in the table? Um, we're looking for that. I'm not. I'm not sure if some of the boys might give some advice while we're fielding. You know, um, but uh, oh, <laughs> hey, it's. it's <laughs> I don't want to go down that route. <laughs> Rolf, do you ever in leading into the World Cup? Did you do any training camps in Amsterdam or anything like that? Because I, <laughs> I did a month there in about seven days once. <laughs> it's a good place. Do you do you ever train out of there? Oh, I love going to Amsterdam. It is, as you say, yeah. 
you, d- you do a lot in seven days. So, um, yeah, no, it's what, what a place. All I can say. Uh, well, well, can I answer, Dan? Do the, do the streets still have quite a few red lights on them or are those days gone? What's the, what's red lights? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Strictly well, orange. It's good. Oh, well, it, was, it was a good defensive <laughs> stroke. You've just elbow up. That was very... <laughs> Stuck it around the corner, thank you. <laughs> it worked for uh, Richmond FC, didn't it? With uh, Ted Lasso, he took them for a day out in Amsterdam, I think. And yeah, he did. He did. It seemed to work in their favour. But, um, but mate, uh, I think uh, Ollie just alluded to the fact that Somerset and county cricket and uh, that you've played a lot against these English blokes uh, individually, and there's no denying you're a journeyman. You said at this age, uh, the, the shit poo or the poo shit takes its toll a little bit more harshly, but I'll just sort of let our listeners know and our viewers and even my three uh, colleagues here, mate, just to show your journeyman status and your stamina and ability to keep going around, we actually played against each other in the IPL final, didn't we? The second oh, wow. IPL edition. Yeah. IPL 2 in South Africa at the Wanderers. What a, what a tussle that was. Yeah, we came up short. I remember that. But yeah, no. I mean, yeah. Yeah, Roy still played also. It was, uh, yeah, ages. He did. Off. Off. Hey, I've been retired for bloody three generations and, <laughs> and then you're still going and still churning them out, mate. So, um, yeah, that was... That was quite quite the time back then. Who would have known that the, the IPL was going to go where it went? Yeah, no, I thought I thought it's going to be three years of IPL, and then the whole bubble's going to burst, and you know that's it. <laughs> that's, that's <moved> on. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's, uh, it's turned into a massive massive deal, though. Oh, yeah, I, I think, Vaughny, Vaughny, I'll just think, look, I think you're spot on, Bulldog, about the, the the fact that something had to change for the IPL to survive, and I think it was. Once players, certainly in our franchise, once owners were getting angry at players for not performing, but but there was also written in the contract you had to go to the party after the game because they were bringing in Bollywood stars, they were bringing in musicians, and, and you had to be there for a certain amount of time. So I think once they realised that they had to ban the players from going to the parties, that was going to add to the legitimacy of the tournament and get some longevity out of it. It was a clever move, clever move. But uh, Sorry, Vaughn, I'll cut you off. Yeah, I'm just saying, uh, Ollie, did, um, did Rolls bowl to Gilly in that final? or was there any um, came- I'll just have to check check my notes. Roll, do, you do may you remember, Rolls. Do you remember, guys? Did you, did you? He didn't bowl to me because I was out second ball trying to hit Anil Kumble over the grandstand. Second ball yeah. of the match. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you're only as good as your last dig. I got 84 off about 30 in the semi. I was feeling good and uh, got out yeah. second ball duck in the final. But I might, have, I might have whipped the bales off off the bulldog just to stump him late in the game. I reckon you got. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Gilly. The good news is I'm just looking at it here. You actually you survived three balls. It three was, was it? Ball. There you go. That was a decent yeah. outing. Roy got 33 off 21. Herschel Gibbs 53 off 48. Yep. And then yeah, Rolly, you were none for 28 off four. They got it. Yep. Seven. Not too bad. Yeah. Yeah. And then, who did you say you stumped there, Gilly? He, he stole Roll with top scorer, 32 off 21 with three yeah. sixes for Rolf in the final. But yep. Gilly off Oja did get stumped. Unbelievable. Pragyan Oja, yeah. Well, and I reckon I might have even, yeah, a young Virat Kohli in the yeah. team as well. Bold Roy. Andrew Simons was bowling. Stumped Gilbert. <laughs> Very good. Um, oh. Now, Roloff, we do. Uh, it is a cricket World Cup show, as we've learned, and we, we do need to keep people up to date and informed. So you're more than welcome to hang around as we go through a few of these results and give your because we'd love to get your take on if there you've played every team that's worth playing except mm. for India. Um, we'd love to know. We'll, we'll get into it. Who you who you think might be able to take down the might of India? But before we do, just at the top of the show, we'd like to bring our producer Ollie in. He just gives us a bit of a uh, bit of a social media update just to keep us honest. Mm. Um, all things social. There's a very special one this week for a few reasons. One, thanks to Smart B, who have sent me a hat. As you can see, an orange hat just for Roli. So that was a beautiful touch from them. And the socials, yeah, they've been they've been going off. You said Gilly there a couple of things. You said 
Rolf, you won't believe where you are at now after all these years. You're on the biggest podcast, uh, cricket podcast in France, but a few other updates. It's also <laughs> now in Pakistan, South Africa, the UK after oh, Damien Martin. I think we're struggling in Amsterdam, so this should help us for that one. <laughs> but then um, the biggest sport podcast, India. So that was a big Whoa. social Ooh. update overall. Um, really, really good. And then, Gilly, you also said, I've been retired three decades. Famously, Puma India don't know this because they keep no. sending him shoes, um, Robert. So what we're going to do, he's got them for a giveaway. And we asked people for the best injury um, they've ever sustained playing cricket. So I've got three entries here. I am, I am going to read each entry. And if you don't mind, special guest, you pick the winner, I yes, think, Rolf. Good call. Yeah, for who sure. gets these shoes. And of course, I'm sure you know, I will sign them for the winner. So um, they'll get... So, sorry, get Ollie, just, just for clarity for, for, for Bulldog, uh, the, the competition was described the, the best, pretty most injury. unique injury on the back of uh, Lisa Healy tried to separate a pet dog's and had a finger <laughs> chomped. Yeah. And they, they, I, out I, of the WBBL. I, I think her dogs were shit poos. They were. <laughs> now, does, does Glenn Maxwell, is he a chance of winning the shoes? <laughs> oh, there's a lady. All right. So, so here are the three options, Rolf, and you're going to pick the winner for us, please. Yeah. So the first one is from Hanrahan Wrights. He says, cricket injuries are a given, but the most intriguing one was when I got hit on the head while fielding. The twist, it was a ball from a different match. If you play on Indian playgrounds, there's five five pitches going, five games going on and five different pitches. So that was from Harahan, option one. Option two is from Tia McQueen. She says, I was playing backyard cricket with my then fiance on Australia Day when I smacked the ball over the fence and immediately fell down in pain. Turns out, as I hit the six, I twisted, got my foot caught in the lawnmower, and it caused me to dislocate my knee. Oh, so ooh. that is from Tia McQueen in a lawnmower. And finally, option three, Adnan Ibrahim. I was the wicketkeeper, and the bowler tried crazy spin delivery. At that point, I sneezed uncontrollably, <laughs> lost my balance, and ended up spraining my ankle. Here's the best part. The ball turned, hit the stumps, left the batsman in shock and everyone else laughing as he had a sneezing fit. So there are your options. You've got option one, wrong match. Option two, Lord mm. Lower. Option three, sneeze gate. Who are getting the shoes signed by me? I reckon option one. <laughs> getting injured. Yeah. Yeah. Option one. Good call. Fantastic. Good we'll call. get them over to um, you, um, Mr. Hanrahan writes, probably via Vaughny in India. So yeah. that's um, fantastic. And thanks again, Smart B, for the update because they give all of the uh, great stories. Rolls, any, any silly injuries throughout your 450 years playing the game? Funny, funny thing is, a couple of years ago, 2021, no, yeah, 2021, I missed my first game through injury. Ever. What? First ever? What? <laughs> ever? <laughs> we are still stripping. You haven't been trying. Did like a side in the blast, and that was the first. And then since then, I've had a few. But yeah, does, <laughs> does a shit poo count as an injury? It does. No, that's not, <laughs> yeah, no, that's not an injury. No, <laughs> that's Ill, Ill, illness. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus, yeah. that's a great effort. That. Oh, so wait, what's wait, been the secret? Wait. What's what, what's been the secret to that? Has it been diet related? Has it been uh, making sure your thirst is quenched enough? An appropriate me measure? I think. Uh, Decent recovery after the thirst. I think that was that, that was yeah. Clever. Like, yeah, play play yeah. hard, work hard, just get out of the system. So I reckon that was it. That's <laughs> the there's a good old school formula that work hard, play hard. We don't need that enough, do we, these days? <laughs> Not anymore. Let's jump into these results, guys. There's been some big ones since we were last on. Uh, why don't we start with Australia defeating England by 33 runs? Hmm. Australia, 286. They were all out. England were probably thinking they were a bit of a chance. They are probably pretty happy with getting the Aussies all out, but in their chase, only 253. Smith, there was a few starts in the Aussie side. Smith, 44. Labashane, 71. Cameron Green, 47. Um, as we touched on, Mitchell Stark, again, he then came steaming in, got another wicket on the first ball of the mm. innings. Um, and according to his wife on Willow Talk, another podcast, she was saying that he has the highest record for getting players out on the first ball of an innings, which is a good stat to have. 
Um, Darwin Milan, he was 50, and Stokes, 64. Stokes probably annoyed that he didn't go on with it, but it was that man against Amsterdam. The man who's, well, he's now the leading wicket taker, 19th for the tournament. He got three for 21 off 10. The Aussies sitting pretty. Is that five in a row, Gilly? Yeah, I think it is. It is. It is five. It is com- commanding position. It was good. I thought it was good. Um, Zamps, what really reignited after a somewhat of a slow start with some injury niggles and, and so on at the start of the tournament, what really reignited it was his trip to Durham Shala. Uh, a big walk up in the mountains where he could do what he does at home and just pretty much get down to nakedness and just wear a loincloth around. He, that's peace-loving mung beans up there. At home in Bangalore, he's got his, he's got his miniature goats that keep him company. Uh, so he would have come past a few of those. A few of the little Sherpas up there might have spoken something to him in the local dialogue. And uh, I think that's been a, a wonderful. He's a leading wicket taker now. So Zamps is back. Baby, thanks to the Dalai Lama world. On on Zamps, one for you, Rolf. What's he doing well? Because I didn't want to bring it up, but you were one of his culprits for a golden duck when you guys met. So what does he do well in the comp? What's he doing? I think especially like the last few games, his, his consistency in his landing area has been been unbelievable. And I think for leg spinners, that is, that's probably... The challenge is having that consistency as a wrist spinner, and I think he's been unbelievable, not giving any loose loose deliveries, and uh, yeah, just being at at the batters the whole time, and uh, I think that that's been key for him. Mm. Yep, I, I thought it was wonderful that it was Australia that managed to knock England out. Obviously, there's been a little bit of history lately. Um, yep. and Mitchell Stark. He made the wonderful comment after in his post-match interview. He said, "England will probably claim a moral victory." <laughs> um, well, I think, which I, I think that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's we, right. I yeah. mean, yeah. if you didn't know before that game, the game was always going to be judged on who bowled the quickest ball in the match, mm. uh, and Mark Wood bowled 156 kilometres an hour, which was probably 10 miles an hour quicker than any of the Australian bowlers. So uh, there is the moral victory. It was all about pace. Yeah. As we all know, the 50-over game dying anyway, so England don't give a flying <laughs> hoot about it. Uh, why would you want to win a 50-over World Cup when no one cares? Yeah. So realistically, uh, yeah, the moral victory was for England. Uh, I'll be quite serious. For England to only strike Zamper at 21, 21 no boundaries, this thing, the white ball team, uh, uh, look, they've been a revelation for seven years and not one sweep. Get down and sweep, get dirty and sweep him. I'd rather him have got five for 68 than three for 21. Josh tried the best thing. He tried to launch him out the ground. I think that unsettled England. They probably thought, oh, no, we can't play too many shots. Very unlike an England team. But to see the spin, and actually, fact, Maharaj against India uh, went for 31, not one boundary off his bowling either. So, Rolls, I, I think you've got a great chance against India. They've got a real weakness against left-arm spin. Yeah, especially at Chinnaswamy where it uh, turns around corners and massive outfield. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, you'll be right at home. Yeah, spot on. Hey, I reckon, um, Vaughan, you're right about all the uh, – oh, well, Prof, you mentioned Mitch – Mitch Stark taking us back to the ashes again about the morals. Yeah. I mean, there's been so much rubbish talk. We can't keep continuing with it at all. We were hearing it from all quarters. And and I, I guess it leads me to the fact that we did hit number one in the podcast. But I, I would say that the, the trendsetters in podcasting around cricket for a long while have been the grade cricketer who did have me on as a guest and told me that I'd go on there as a uh, – they'd give us a plug and they didn't even mention Club Prairie Fire. But, um, but they are the – they're the – the benchmark, they really are. But I would have to say, without doubt, man for man, guys, I would take our team over them any time. <laughs> but, but again, enough of the Ashes crap talk. Let's just move it forward. Very good. Do you reckon Joe Root regretted that one, Vaughny? Or Rolf oh, straight up? Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I've got, Interesting I've, timing of such off, quote. Got to go, boys. <laughs> you're out, you're out. Oh, let, let, let's be honest he's in a press conference and he will have been asked would you take Australia's team over England's now let's be honest what the fuck is he meant to say <laughs> yes I mean he, he has to say England and by the way as we found out at the end of the Ashes the Australians are boring and, and Joe wants to be in an exciting team 
<laughs> because England still have a bit of fun. They still play golf and they still drink a bit of piss. Now, <laughs> that's why he said what he said. I, I agree. And while we're talking on this game, speaking of how boring they are, I'm bringing Basbald in early. So we do a section, oh. Rob, of who's been Basbald um, mm-hmm. because we created it. We've basically created the game. And I'm giving it to Australia because they got hit for six sixes um, and they only themselves hit three. Massive deck turning everywhere. So they've hit double as many sixes, England, in that game than Australia. So I think overall, excluding Zampa, my nomination, Australia have been Basbald again. Uh, you need to explain to Rolf what it means. So to be Basbald is basically you get your pants pulled down and shellacked. Is that, would you say that right, Vaughny? Yeah, uh, Aldi, can you just read out um, the uh, term of Basbald in the dictionary? It's now an official uh, word in the dictionary, if you didn't know that, Rolls. It's, uh, it, it's gone in there. What, what's the official uh, terminology, Aldi? Yeah, so Basbald is used to describe a style of play implemented by the England test coach and former New Zealand cricketer, Brendan Baz McCullum, marked by a commitment to risk-taking and quick scoring. Mm, yeah, so uh, and then the footnote says, "See Australia in the nineties. Uh, I think that's <laughs> what it was. So, uh, I think just how serious we are about this baseballing uh, bulldoggers, but more so the ultimate respect with which we hold Dutch cricket, y- your good self and your teammates. Uh, Baz De Lita, uh, he didn't even get nominated for baseball. Um, that's how highly we rate uh, you guys and the respect we have uh, against Australia. Some would say he went the journey, but I tell you what, he bowled eight bloody good overs and then got met at the end. <laughs> poor, poor bugger. Yeah. How, how, what was his reaction to that, actually, to set that, that new world record? Was there chuckles of laughter or was he devastated or what? He was, he was disappointed a little bit afterwards uh, for a few minutes and then he was like, whoa, that was tough. And he, then he almost just took <laughs> <laughs> But, yeah, that was, oh, it was a tough watch. It was a tough day. Yeah. Robert Rolls, can I? Can I ask you about one of your players that I love? I mean, you're my favourite, obviously. Um, but my next favourite is Maxi O'Dowd. Is that is that the right pronunciation? Yeah. Now that hairstyle. I mean, it, it, what 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 music is he into? Just a uh, uh, curiosity. <laughs> he he loves like uh, dance music because he's actually a DJ also. So <laughs> he's on the deck. So all of the the club tunes and uh, yeah, he loves that. So yeah, the well, hair, so just what. what why has he got the rocker look if he's into dance? <laughs> Something different. I don't know. I honestly don't know. I don't think he looks too good with short <laughs> can, can you ask him from uh, us all on the Club Pro Fire uh, podcast? If he what gets a 50 was? against England, can you ask him if he'll cut his hair off for us? <laughs> That's how he used to look with no yeah, hair. look at him. This is, this is the yeah. old Max. Yeah. Could, could be organised. Right. Makes sense. And, I like and, it. And the new well, I reckon I mean, it could be tough for him to get out between 50 and 100, though, especially against England. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, yeah, the, DJ, the DJ can't hit England for a ton, surely. Oh, how good would that, <laughs> that be? Is brilliant, the DJ. <laughs> wait up, wait up, the, the brew bowler starts bowling. <laughs> now, before we move on from India, Australia, the last thing I wanted to talk about was uh, David Willey. We've chatted about him a little bit on this podcast. Mm-hmm. His interview during the week on Sky Sports that he basically came out and they asked him, are you quitting because you're pissed off because he didn't get a contract? And he basically said yes. So, I mean, he's only 33 years old. They're giving contracts to blokes that are 36. Vaughn, did you want I mean, you completely understand it, don't you? Absolutely. You know, he said it weeks ago. Just, you know, he's been England's best player of the World Cup. Don't want to keep going on about it. There's a T20 World Cup in a few months' time. If he's not in the best 15, he's certainly in the best 20. Uh, Reese Top, you always want a left arm seamer in uh, T20 cricket, uh, in white ball cricket generally, but in particular T20 cricket. If Reese Topley uh, breaks down, unfortunately for Reese, he's had a, an unfortunate kind of history of injuries. I mean, how you've not got David Willey on the radar for that T20 World Cup? He was a part of the T20 World Cup squad that uh, obviously won the World Cup just a minute ago. Um, oh, I don't want to keep going over it, but it's one of the most bizarre decisions in cricket in contract history that David mm-hmm. Willey has not been uh, deemed 
good enough uh, to get at least one year when they've given out about four million contracts. It's uh, bizarre. Very strange. Now, let's move on to India since we last spoke. They've had a couple of, well, ginormous wins, you'd call them. Close, they close beat- games. Close games. <laughs> Nail biters, let's call them that. They uh, beat Sri Lanka by 302 runs. Uh, and then they beat South Africa by 243. That was first versus second. Virat Kohli on his 35th birthday, mm. got his 49th hundred, equaling Sachin's record. Not a bad way to spend your birthday. Did you ever have any big innings on your birthdays, boys? Nah, didn't play. <laughs> Roll off yours is New Year's Eve, so I imagine you yeah, had a couple of big innings on your birthday. <laughs> I don't remember my last uh, five birthdays, but it's uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, Chris, play on. yeah. No, nah. <laughs> uh, I don't think I ever punched out. Too. I remember getting a duck uh, in a shield game on my birthday, but that that's about about it. Yeah, New Year's Eve birthdays, Jesus. Just Maybe, just uh... on that, I mean, Gil, you, you'll know commentary is very, you know, it's a skillful art, but it's also about being on at the right time to call the big moments. And that's what all oh. commentators love. Now, I just want to give my good friend, Mark Nicholas, uh, a massive shout out because Virat Kohli's 35th birthday is, is nearing that 100. And Mark Nicholas has just managed to get on the mic to call mm. the ball. That is brilliant. That's genius. That is getting in the team at the right time and just making sure that you're... Now, I've just seen the ICC have released a clip of the commentary of that moment. That is going to go viral. That is yeah. quality work from Mark Ian, just making sure he grabs the mic to call the massive moment. What did he say, Vaughn? Do you remember? What was the... I'll get it up. It's on there. I'll, I'll get it up now. Just do, you, you chat away, lads. I'll get it yeah, up. Yeah, well... Oh, it's no, very good. Vaughn, it, it, it's a pertinent point. Like, uh, timing's everything. And it's hard for the other blokes to commentate when they're bound and gagged out the back, thanks to Nico's <laughs> henchman coming. <laughs> no, that's uh, facetious. He's... He does a good job of it, doesn't he? He's a Rolls Royce when he gets into those big moments. But um, what, what about Virat Bulldog? How much time have you spent bowling to him, or you know, what's the experience like? Yeah, I think obviously myself and Virat, our, our paths crossed when he was what only eighteen, nineteen back in the yeah. night. So uh, uh, yeah, just just a talented individual. Just it's just so good. Mm. Um, but yeah. Yeah, nice guy. I really enjoyed spending time with him. So uh, yeah, glad for him. Yeah. Are you going to are yeah. you going to chirp him at all, Rolls? Are you going to get into him, or are you just going to say nothing? I, I don't think. I think when you when you when you know guys and you sort of have a re, bit of a relationship with them and you say stuff, it doesn't matter. It's uh, then it's just banter. So uh, we might get some of the other players. <laughs> <point>, uh, <laughs> Lads, I've got it. I've, I've got it. Let's hear it. Many happy returns of the day to the Virat Kohli. His 35th birthday, his 49th birthday, and the 18th time that he served me in the undertaking. High class. Many happy returns. High class. But there's one, there's one thing there he didn't mention, and um, Bulldog, we need your thoughts on this, because... He's never got one in the Yorkshire leagues. Um, yeah. I'm not sure if you have, but we strongly believe here that he can't be considered one of the greats until he gets a ton in one of the Yorkshire leagues. So um, what do you think of that? Do you think he would struggle on a wet, cold Tuesday in early <laughs> April? I think I think you've got to first let him know that Yorkshire actually exists. I don't think he knows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's cold up north. It's... Uh, it's tough scenes up there so yeah no you, you might have to go and try it up <laughs> Rose, my, my belief is that until he's done it on a tuesday night in home firth in the huddersfield mm. league you know when there's yep. probably 30 or 40 pissed up idiots shouting at you <laughs> and the bowlers are running in slipping and you can't even take your guard because of the puddle until you until you've got the tongue behind your name in that kind of format you, you can't be you can't be registered as a great <laughs> Or a little, little trip to Scarborough could be interesting. <laughs> well, well, correct, Rob. I mean, if Scarborough's not just about the cricket, it's surviving the week. <laughs> it's, 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 it's surviving shade, shade, shade Wine Bar. If you can get out of Shade Wine Bar before 4am, oh, you've done well. 
<laughs> then then you're a great. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> if you can go to Scarborough, survive the week, get out of shades before four, you won't. But you've got to play having been in shades till four a.m. and then still get a ton. Then then you can be deemed a great. Yeah. What we've done here, um, and thanks to Boulder, really, is plan the El Shito launch party. It's in Shay's Wine Bar, <laughs> DJ Max O'Dowd, on New Year's Eve for all of the last day. And we're done. The world and the right. moon and stars are aligning, aren't they? Oh, well, yeah. what, club, what, what club have you have you played north? I know you've played a, a whole mountain of different club career. What, what about up north, uh, Bulldog? I've, I've played a couple of years in the Central Lancashire League. Uh, I'm talking between oh, yeah. them, but um, yeah, I haven't played much up north. Did you get? I've... Did you get a hundred rolls? Where? In in the Central oh, Lancashire League, did you get one? Did you get a ton? Yeah, got a few there. <laughs> That's why the great of the game, one of the greats. That's what I'm one talking greats. about one of the greats. One of That's the greats. That's why he's on the number one podcast in uh, in the world. One of the greats. Now, I wanted to ask uh, you, Gilly, because there's been a lot of chat about this current Indian team that mm. ooh, they're looking they could go through undefeated here. They don't want to yep. say it, but they could. Now, you were involved in two campaigns <laughs> where you went on undefeated, lifted the trophy. When you're in that and you're in the middle of it, is there a little bit of you that wants to have a loss? Is there a little bit of – are you thinking about it or – Well, <clears throat> I think the way you started this um... – Question, Prof was a bit disrespectful to our guests, given that he's he and his comrades are going to be lining up against them and playing for a spot in the finals. So we can't assume anything. I reckon before the semi final in South Africa, we were sitting there. We'd sort of gone undefeated. We're playing Sri Lanka, and in the team meeting the night before, I was John Buchanan said, "Is anyone nervous about?" we need to have the loss that you've got to have sort of thing. And I shot my hand up. I was absolutely shitting bricks that it was coming for us. The cricketing God was not going to let us continue on. And um, he, he explained that it's a myth. There's no, you don't have to have a loss. And I think that's, and we were able to go on and, and achieve the ultimate success. So I don't think, I think that the only thing that's putting more pressure on them than any internal expectation or any opponent is Michael Vaughan's Twitter account. <laughs> he continually loads them up. He's, it's like he's basting up a Thanksgiving turkey and just getting it ready to cook it right up. He's lavishing them with praise. The Indian public are loving it. That's probably why we are number one in India. And uh, I reckon he's putting more pressure on them than anyone else. So it's quite entertaining to watch. Rolls, if you, if you, if you, I, I'm, I'm absolutely open with the fact that I'm, I'm after more followers. So I, I, I've realised that... <laughs> To get more followers, all you need to do is just keep praising India. Keep praising Virat. Keep praising India. And the, and the followers keep rolling in. Yeah, I, I, look, I'm intrigued by that. So John Buchanan was talking to you as a team and, and you're all thinking about losing a game in, what year was that, 203? Yeah. That was around the time. You could have made a load of money, you know. That was the days where... <laughs> there was a bit of dodge going around. <laughs> Oh, we'll make the money. We'll sell our World Cup winners' rings, all three of them. <laughs> oh, yeah. Rolls, can I just uh, thank you personally? Um, uh, I don't know if you, you, you knew this, but I'm sure you, you, you probably do. But you um, you went on a Sri Lankan trip with my lad, Archie, with the, the Somerset Academy. And um, I have to thank you because he came back with a Sri Lankan shirt that you bought him. Well, there you okay. go. So... Uh, a Sri Lankan shirt, which surprised me when he came back, and he still wears it to this day. That uh, you bought him, I don't know why you bought him it. Um, maybe you felt sorry for him. Uh, and it was, <laughs> it's a, it, by the way, kind of it's a fake, so it's not a real one. So it obviously cost you about cost oh, yeah, you fifty p. Yeah. But yes, yeah, th thanks, thanks for that. You bought my my little little lad at the time, who's now a big lad, uh, a nice Sri Lankan shirt. So thank you. <laughs> it's a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> now, we, nice. Rolf, we are conscious of your time here. Mm. My um, is here. One minute. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, it's unbelievable. So we are conscious of your time, Rolf, as uh, Borny steps out to get his Step eyes. <laughs> we, we will we, – we, today's quiz, I believe, Ollie, is based on our special guest, and it is better if, if we have Rolf here for it. Yeah. So, yeah. so we might jump forward to the quiz, mm. and then we might come back and have a look at our awards. 
Yeah. So you want to take it away here, Ollie? Yeah, I think we'll do we'll do the bulldog quiz. Yep. Hey, thank you because I know you've got training in ten minutes, and then we'll we'll come back and uh, and you know just look at some of the other games while you uh, spin that web. So exactly right. The quiz here, it's all about you. I'm going to give some answers. Uh, you take it one, some questions, and one by one, you'll give me the answer of what you what you think. So let's get straight into it, and uh, yeah, each one results. So first one is out of the three of you. Who has the best first class highest score? So is it Gilly, Vaughny, or the Bulldog? And this is all on Crick Info if you've got any issues with it. But so um, ju- as always, just shout whenever you uh, want to put forward an answer, guys. But um, who has the, the best first class highest score? I'm going Vaughan. Gilly. Gilly. I- I'm going Gilly. Bulldog, you're going Gilly as oh, well. I- Gilly? I- I'm actually going the Bulldog. So we have Michael Vaughan, 197. Ooh. Adam Gilchrist, 204 not out. The Bulldog, 205 not out. I'm glad. Hey, that's hey, kids out there, that's where study and preparation comes home to a T. I was looking up the stats earlier about our guest. Oh, 205 oh, in the see, first class. See, 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 Sorry, research isn't allowed. No, that's, be no, that's, that's, <laughs> that is tremendous. That's, 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 that's right. That's different to when during the quiz, Vaughny actually just Googled and I could see him typing no, away. No, so Googling after the question. Is, Googling is cheating. That's fine. Research is prep and we don't do that on Club <laughs> Barry Fire. <laughs> it's different. Yeah, it's immorally wrong, isn't it? <laughs> okay, question number two. What is higher? The number of test centuries from Gilly, the number of test centuries from Vaughney, or the number of clubs played for on Crick Info by the Bulldog? Oh. <sighs> well, that, that's, that's club, country, you know, everything on that profile page. I'm going, so, I'm, going, I'm going me. What's higher? Yeah. Test yeah. centuries for either you two or the Bulldogs clubs? I reckon. I, I'm 18, so I, 18... <laughs> I'll go Century. Bulldog. I'm going Century. Bulldog? Centuries. You're going, you're going Vaughny? Yeah. We have 17 centuries for Gilly, 18 for Vaughny, and only 16 clubs oh. <laughs> represented. <laughs> <laughs> who, who said Vaughny then? So it's 1-1-1. One, one, one oh, now. they're all 1-1-1. One, they're one, all one. on one. All right. Point there for Bulldog, point there for Vaughny. Okay, now we're only going to look at bowling this time, okay? So, um, sadly, Gilly's just going to be a spectator in this one, but uh, you can can still play. What is higher, the number of list A, four wicket hauls for Vaughny, or list A, five wicket hauls for the Bulldog? Ooh. (laughs) He's got to be the Bulldog. My filthy offspinners didn't get many forfeits. <laughs> Bulldogs are <laughs> working. You list, go, Vaughan, list, going, list, yeah. So list A, they're, they're domestic 50 over games and stuff like that, aren't they? They're exactly and, right. The, yeah, and the leagues in Yorkshire, they count. The answer, oh. yeah. Is that, a, is that our first just, pass? Hey, no. just sorry, just no. out of interest, that the, when you got the, the 100 on the, the Tuesday night on the Sticky Dog uh, Bulldog, uh, how'd you go with the pill? Any wickets as well? <laughs> nah. No wickets. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Already at the bar. <laughs> runs. Well, it, Vaughny, you had four forfers, and uh, it was a trick question. Bulldog four as well. It's a tie there. No points at all. That is, oh. I know. So I'm going to leave. <laughs> can't do Charlie, 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 can I? Can I? So why the fuck have you had that question when there's not even a, a correct answer? <laughs> The same amount is still right. an answer. It's still always <laughs> available. Give it as an option. But no, no one could win. Term. What's higher? They're the same. That would be a point. We've had this oh, before. Let's go. Rolly, come on. He's, he's got to go. go. Yeah, yeah, he's got to go. We're going to batting. Who has had the most sixes? Is it oh. roll off in T20 internationals, Gilly in T20 internationals, or Vaughny in one day internationals? Gilly. Oh, crack. Well, that's hard. Uh, I'm going. I'm going. Uh, oh, good. Oh, it's close because the bulldog. You launch it. You you hit plenty. Yeah, I'm going bulldog. I'm the bulldog. I go bulldog. Bulldog, what are you going? Gilly. Gilly hit 13 in T20 internationals. 
Vaughan hit 13 in one day internationals. The Bulldog hit 14 in T20 internationals. Yeah. <laughs> Good boy. Good yep. On yep. Two. And, that, and that's it for now. Just and this has worked perfectly because it's two. It's the tiebreaker here. Yeah. What is the Bulldogs' signature celebration? The first one to do it on camera wins it. He spoke about it on Instagram this week. He didn't realise he does it, but he's done it for about 20 years. Do either of you know it? And you can act it out now, Gilly or Vaughney. No, I'm not familiar with it. What, what's and, uh, the... Give us a look, Roll, Bulldog. Bulldog. Charles, what did you do? It was on your Instagram this week. <laughs> double yeah, fist. Right, okay, the doubles. Oh. The doubles. Yes. Yeah, double fist. Is, yes. Right. Can see it now. Yes. Okay. Well, yeah. we need one more tiebreaker yeah, then. We've got one more because then uh, you can come back in, Bulldog, to take it because it's always double points, the winner. So you can go from one to three. <laughs> you have played ODI cricket for two nations. How many other players have done that? Nearest gets it. Uh, ODI. How many England. others? ODI International. Exactly. How many? Well, festival. How many other players? Yeah. Uh, I'm going. I'm going eleven. Uh, how many did you say? Eleven. Well, England have I'm got going... like eight. Of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going twelve. Okay. No, not many gaps there, Bulldog. What are we locking in for the win? Now there's seven. Oh, yeah, Sixteen. Win Gilly is nearest. Gilly. Sixteen. No, I just was always going one more than you. I thought it was more, but... <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Hey, Rolly, we'll, we better let you go here, mate. Good luck against England and even more good luck against India, mate. Thanks for joining us. Mm. It's been, been an absolute pleasure. Thanks for having me, guys. Cheers. Thanks, Rolly.